Praise the Lord, everyone. Prepare yourself. Jesus will appear. When you're expecting someone, you get ready, right? You get the house clean, you get dressed up, you turn the lights on. If there's a delay, you would probably check yourself in the mirror one last time. Things that were presentable can sometimes get out of place. Today, we'll learn to clean house and get everything back in order according to the word of God because Jesus is coming, he will appear. Our scripture today says, and as it is appointed for man to die once, but after this, the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. And that comes from Hebrews 9, 27 through 28. And I want to share something with you. The Lord spoke to me this morning during my prayer time. And it's kind of tough, but it, it's true. It's actually not as tough as it is sad. He said, people will regret not pursuing me, but it will be too late. So seek the Lord while he may be found. There is a short window of repentance still available. Please take it. The Lord is gracious, not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. So what should we be doing right now to prepare ourselves for the Lord? Uh, excuse me. What should we be doing right now to prepare ourselves for the Lord's appearing? Work on you. Okay, don't work on other people. You can't do that. Work on yourself. So again, our word today is prepare yourself. Jesus will appear. Okay, but before we get into the word of God, let's pray. Dear Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, thanking you for all you are, for all you have done for us. Thank you for sending your dear son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you for the gift of repentance, the gift that to be able to read your word the gift to be able to re repent and ask for forgiveness of our sins right now we ask that you just take over all of you none of me speak to your people Lord. strengthen us refresh us guide us into your perfect will protect us keep us in your perfect care and lord right now we rebuke the spirit of fear um, anxiety depression anything that would come in between us and in receiving your best lord we rebuke it now in the name of jesus lord we thank you so much for all you have done for us and we speak peace and life into our hearts mind and souls into our situations and lord right now we ask that you open our eyes that we could see open our ears that we could hear your word and grow lord and become who you would have us to be in jesus name amen okay so point one live in a humble home we want to walk in humility. Jesus was humble. He was so humble. He obeyed unto death. Okay. So certainly we need to do the same thing. The word of God says in James 4, 6, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So if we want to receive grace from God, if we want to receive forgiveness of our sins, if we want help to change, we have to be humble. That means we have to think of God before we think of ourselves. We have to honor God more than we honor our own thoughts and feelings because we can think and feel all kinds of ways, but it's probably not godly, right? And so I love this image here. This man, he, he is just looking up to the sky. His arms are outstretched. He's reaching up to heaven and he's just surrendering. And that's what we have to do. If surrender, that is the point where you get help. When you say, God, I can't do this. I know you're right. I know you're perfect and I cannot reach you. Would you come to me, Lord? Would you reach me and save me? If you want that, let's pray right now. Say, dear God, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I believe your son, Jesus, died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead on the third day and that he has all power in his hands. And Lord, that you sent him to pay the price for my sins. I receive him now. And Lord, please fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that I can be more like you and walk in your will in Jesus name. Amen. Now I know I said that prayer fast, right? So if you would like to receive Jesus into your life, and that was really fast because I do speak quickly, often, um, go to do not go to hell.com backslash no Jesus. 
a very good explanation of the whole plan of salvation is there along with the prayer and the scriptures printed out where you can go along, you know, flow along with it, read it, pray after it. And it's only six minutes long. So again, go to do not go to hell.com backslash know Jesus and that prayer of salvation is there for you and I have to do that because we're getting close y'all I mean Jesus could come at any moment you see how things have tuned up around us and this is no time to be proud this is time to beg God for mercy ask for help because you will get it if you ask for it so don't be proud be humble and get the help you need Okay, so I'm going to read that same scripture in one other version. Actually, no, we're going to jump down to James 1, 21 through 22. Okay, and it reads this way. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Okay, so that's the New King James Version, and that word meekness is the same as humble. Okay, and I like what, the way it says it here. It says, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, because we can just be overflowing with wickedness, right? And we need to get rid of that. And that another version reads this way excuse my stumbling over words. I'm excited about this message. Again, James 1 21 through 22 comes from the Holman Christian Standard Bible, and it says it this way, therefore ridding yourselves of all moral filth and evil, humbly receive the implanted word, which is able to save you, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. So today we're gonna get a little boost. We're gonna learn how to do this word and not deceive ourselves, because what's the point of reading the word of God if you don't believe it and act on it, right? That's a waste of time. But um, Pursuing God is not a waste of time. Remember Jesus said, some people will regret not pursuing him. Don't be one of those people. Do today what needs to be done so you won't have any regrets, okay? Let's keep moving. Point number two, live in love. Make your home lovely. Isn't this a beautiful home? I don't know what your style is, or I should say, what's your aesthetic? My daughter tells me, you know, that's how they say things. We used to say, what's your style? Now they say, what's your aesthetic? Okay, so what is your aesthetic? I love this one. This home is bright. There's a lot of sun coming through the windows. Um, it's organized. It's neat. I don't see any clutter. There's no trash on the floor, no stains on the wall. Everything is in its place and it's full of colorful and it's beautiful. So I'm, I'm really loving this home right here. Now, spiritually, could we say the same thing about our spirit is it a lovely home right because you know our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit um, first Corinthians 6 18 through 20 tells us flee sexual immorality every sin that a man does is outside the body but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body and here's the part I want to focus on verse 19 or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you whom you have from God and you are not your own for you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So you are God's home and he wants to make you look fabulous like this home, right? If your before is kind of shabby and broke down like mine was and still needs work, but it's a lot better than it used to be. Um, we want to get with God because he is the one who comes in and transforms the home and makes it beautiful. And we want to work with him, not against him. Imagine someone coming to fix up your home and you won't let them in the door, right? And it's been paid for. Somebody's paid to renovate and you won't even let them in the door. That's kind of how it is with our relationship with Jesus. Jesus paid the price, his own blood, his death on the cross to be able to to purchase you, redeem you back to God, come in and do a makeover so that you're fit for heaven. Because right now, you know, we're a hot mess without Jesus, so we have to be made over. And one thing that makes a home lovely is the lack of clutter. So it's time for a deep purge. I know I've been purging this week, and it kind of uh, ties into two things. Whenever you physically get rid of things and reorganize your house and throw out trash, I can't help but spiritually, you know, purge and in my soul at the same time. You know, take some time to get with God and ask him to remove the things that don't belong. Some things that are very normal by today's standard 
are trash according to God's standard. And remember, we read that verse. It was from 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20. And I have to say it because a lot of times it's overlooked. But the Bible says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Remember, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we don't have to get cranky at this word. Don't get cranky about this word. We're all sinners. We have all fallen short of the grace of God. But the good news is God has made a way of escape. Now, understand this. Our mind is where most of the junk is hidden. After God rem removes the obvious things that are wrong in our lives, you know, all the external things that everybody can see, you can't hide those sins. So if you're hanging out at clubs and bars all night and cursing people out and losing your temper, everybody knows it, right? Um, it's quite obvious. But if you're not hanging out at bars and clubs and drinking and partying and just doing all kinds of things you shouldn't be doing that are quite obvious, we're still sinners. Because consider this, what about the things you think about, right? It's not just what we actually do. It's even in our thought life. God wants us to be pure and holy, even in our thought life. Okay, so what about these? Are you stubborn, prideful, vain, or selfish? I know I could be some of all of those things sometimes, right? We're all still working on it. So this is a good time to, to examine yourself. Consider those things. Ask God to reveal things to you. What about envy and jealousy and criticism do you know every time you criticize someone you open the door to be criticized that is a spiritual whatever because look god is not mocked whatever a man reaps that shall he whatever i'm sorry whatever a man sows that will he also reap so whatever you're sowing whatever you're putting out there is going to come back on you so that's even another reason to purge right so think about this Every time we sin, we open the door to evil. That's right. Every time we sin, we open the door to evil. So if we don't want evil coming back to us, we need to close the door on it, get rid of it, purge it, right? And again, don't get mad at this word because this is a very good word. Wouldn't you want to know if you had an infestation in your home? Or would you want to just um, be in denial, right? <laughs> oh, it's not. No, there's no problem. Oh, excuse me. That's not a roach. Um, no, we don't have any problems over here. So I know that may be a silly example, but pests are just a fact of life, right? Sin is a part of life here on earth. We live in a sinful fallen world, but we don't want, we don't have to be infested with it, right? It can be in our world. We can't rid the world of sin yet. Jesus will do that eventually, but we can let God purge it from our lives. All right. So hang in there. We're almost done. Think about this. Jesus is able to save us. If we could do it for ourselves, we wouldn't need him. Do you know his name, Jesus, um, actually means God saves? And he died to save us from all of these, not to justify them. So although the love of God covers our sins, it also teaches us not to sin. And the greatest commandment of God is this. And it comes from Luke 10, 27. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And if we focus on this simple truth and obey it, soon our entire house will be neat and clean and lovely. Because I love coming home to a clean house. What about you? Here we are, home stretch. Okay, now that we have... Uh, learn about cleaning our house and purging we want to make sure we maintain it now think about this if um, you go home and your kids have made a mess and you say well you know didn't I ask you to clean your room and they say well I cleaned it up two years ago that is not going to cut it right or imagine working at a restaurant and you go in as a customer and um, it's a it's just crazy messy and nasty and you look on their inspection sticker and it says that they were last inspected like five years ago that doesn't help you for today right so this is a daily walk we've got a daily faith walk faith doesn't mean we do nothing faith means we 
um, trust God to do through us what we can't do our for what we can't do for ourselves. So point three, examine yourself, clean your home daily. I can't clean your home for you and you can't clean mine. Not like in this world, we can hire somebody, but in the spiritual world, you have to clean your own home. Yeah, that's right. No, no maid service. You got to do it yourself. So get your little mop and get your face together because we got to clean this place up. Okay. First John three, two, three, three, first John three, two through three says, Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So that is our encouragement from the Lord. We need to purify ourselves, right? He can't do it for us. Even Jesus paid the way for us, but we still have a part to play. So you might, some people might say, well, you know, my house is already clean. And if the Bible could speak, and it does, because the Bible is the word of God made flesh. It is a living word that speaks when you read it. And it puts everything in alignment with the word of God. So if you were to tell the Bible, oh, my house is already clean, the Bible would tell you, you might think you're clean, but let me clean you according to my standard. It's like going to the dentist. Okay, I do this. I don't know if you do this, but I do. Do you brush your teeth before you go get your teeth clean? I do because I don't want the dental hygienist to think I'm nasty. Right? Think about that. You're paying to get your teeth clean, but before you go to get them clean, you try to do it yourself. So then this is the thing. It doesn't matter how much I do before I go there. She can always find something, right? Because she sees everything I miss. She sees the stains behind the teeth, stains in between the teeth, maybe stains or something deep in the crevices. So the dental hygienist sees things in places I can't see on my own. She sees stain where I see nothing. To me, it all looks pretty good. But when she gets finished, there's quite a, some, quite a bit of work to be done. That's why we have to see a specialist for certain things. The Holy Spirit is our specialist when it comes to our soul and our spirit. He is the helper who transforms us into the image of Christ day by day. The Holy Spirit reveals our hidden sins and convicts us of sin so that we can repent and be clean before our father God. Now, this is a big concept right here. The Holy Spirit convicts, but he doesn't condemn. So when God reveals something to you, he also shows you hope. He shows you what you need to do to change. And then he helps you. Condemnation comes from the devil, which just says you're horrible and, and just pounds you into the ground and leaves you no hope, no options, makes you think you're, you're worthless. There's nothing you can do. That's from the devil. You rebuke that Jesus paid a high price so that you can repent. So take advantage of that gracious gift from God through Jesus Christ. So think about this on earth. Specialists can be expensive and everybody can't afford them. Right. But God is so gracious. He has given us the Holy spirit freely. And to learn more about the Holy Spirit, read John chapters 15 and 16, okay? Read that. It will bless you. Have you made an appointment with the Holy Spirit? If you have not made an appointment with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to come over there and spank your little butt because you know you need to get with the Holy Spirit. How can you be sanctified without the Holy Spirit? Okay, make an appointment with the Holy Spirit. You may say, how can, how do I do that? I don't know how to do that. It's real simple. If you already received Christ into your life, you can pray this way. Dear Abba Father, please fill me with more of your Holy Spirit today. Please reveal all the sin in my life so I can repent. Please give me strength to make the changes you want me to make in Jesus name. Amen. So that was simple, right? You don't have to say that exact prayer, but something along those lines would just do the job and get you a real nice appointment with the Holy Spirit. You don't even have to wait. He's right there with you, um, you know, on hold, uh, waiting for you to call out for help. So remember this. We don't want to have a yuck soul. Um, you can have a yuck soul if you don't do anything to maintain your walk with God. It's going to be really nasty in your soul if you don't do anything to maintain your walk with God. And so what's daily maintenance as it relates to spiritual things? reading the word of God and praying. That's how we do our daily spiritual maintenance. The word of God scrubs us on the inside and prayer removes the junk. Nobody likes piles of junk and trash sitting around the house that would attract pests. And so why would we tolerate piles of sin 
filling up our soul, turning it into a trash heap. And again, do you realize that unrepented sin attracts spiritual pests, which are unclean spirits? So, you know, if you don't want a whole ecosystem going on in your house, for instance, you know, if you have a smaller pest like ants, well, if you let that go unchecked, larger pests come in to eat the ants. Okay. <laughs> then a larger pest comes around to eat that. So you don't want like this uh, spiritual ecosystem in your home that is um, infested and going on a downward spiral. All right. So let's clean the house daily. Let's clean daily. And remember, sin is spiritual garbage that is not allowed into the kingdom of heaven. Read Revelation 21, 7 through 8 for a list of the junk that will not go into heaven. I'm just going to say it because it needs to be said. Revelation 21, 7 through 8 says, he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable murderers sexually immoral sexually immoral sorcerers idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is a second death now we don't want any of that and you don't have to have it if you're listening to this message say lord i might be doing some of that help me to stop and please forgive me and that is the start to your new beginning okay so once you pray that prayer he would forgive you but then you need to pray to stay out of those sins. And that's where we sometimes miss it. You can't just say, forgive me, and then go right back to it, right? You have to ask for forgiveness and then work on changing. Do that maintenance. And look, here's some good news. This is really good news. If you pray and ask God to reveal and remove sin from your life, he will do it. He will definitely answer that prayer. First Thessalonians 5, 23 through 24 says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful who also will do it. Now here's a tip. This is some real good news. You better receive this good news. Stand in faith on that promise from the word of the Lord and pray to be preserved blameless. God, and here's the tip, God's will for you is to be preserved blameless, blameless. So if you pray the word of God back to God, he will answer it. That is a prayer that is in line with his will and he will answer and help you. Okay, here we are wrapping it up with the best part, which is now that we have our houses organized and purged and we've been doing that daily maintenance, it's time. Why don't we just invite some people over, right? I mean, if you have a nice home and you've worked hard to get it all together, don't you want to just have some company say, hey, why don't you come over and hang out? God wants us to do the same thing. Once God has moved into our lives and he has begun that transformation process and we've gotten rid of all, you know, the things that don't belong there and we've put in the good things from God's word, you know, love, peace, joy, goodness, kindness, meekness, temperance, patience, and faith which all of those things are the fruit of God's spirit, which you can find in Galatians 5.22. When you have that, invite somebody else to have that in their lives. Don't you know, everybody loves joy and peace and hope. Everybody loves that. And without God, you really cannot have it. You cannot truly possess the fruit of the spirit the way that you need to without God in your life, okay? So share God's love. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. So walk in love with people. That's sharing God's love. But also tell them, share the gospel with them, okay? Share a, a YouTube video or a post or, you know, something a little card or whatever you have that just directs people to the Lord. Do it now because the day is coming where we may not be able to share the gospel as freely. So do it now while we have time, okay? Now, if the Lord lives in your home now, you will live in his soon. I'm going to say that one more time. If the Lord Jesus Christ lives in your home right now, you will live in his home soon. Again, ask the Lord to forgive you and cleanse you from all of your sins. Remember, 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Romans 10, 9 through 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. And we did say the prayer of salvation earlier, but let's say it again in case you were on the fence. Dear God, please forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, come and live in my heart and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want you to be the Lord of my life. Help me, Lord, to love you more each day and to obey you. Okay, so if you prayed that prayer, Jesus moved into your home, do that daily maintenance and get excited because Jesus is coming soon. He will appear. John 14, 1 through 3 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there, you may be also. That is great, great, great news. And remember, whenever you have a need, reach out to God, put him first, put him first in your health, put him first in your finances, put him first and everything you need will be added to you. I love you. God bless you. And um, keep praying for me. I'm praying for you. This message was actually in response to a request. Somebody said, tell us what to do. Make a video on how to be ready for Jesus um, return. And here it is. So I do check those comments. I not always able to respond to every single one, but I do um, pray for you. Know that I am praying for you. So I love you. Keep praying for me and have a blessed, blessed day.